As a Starfleet lieutenant, or indeed as an individual with exclusive creative control over my own thoughts, there are 11 words that I never, ever want to hear coming over the comm system during my night shift covering for Captain Jack on the bridge. We've been trying to reach you about your ship's extended warranty. Wait, no, 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 that's the wrong 11 words. I meant, we are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. That's right. Put all that secret of Section 31 balderdash in the cargo bay. Today, we are talking about one of my favorite Trek races ever, the Borg. Whenever they show up, you know you're going to have a bad time. Take a look at Wolf 359. One standard Borg cube was responsible for that, with most estimates agreeing 39 Starfleet vessels were annihilated by that single cube. Although, to be fair, they did have Captain Jean-Luc Charles Xavier on their side at the time. But it was still bloody scary, all right? Welcome to Trek Central, Lords, Ladies and Sovereigns. I'm your host, Lieutenant Adam, and let's get straight into it. Today, of course, we're not talking about the standard Borg Cube, but the Tactical Cube, one of the Collective's most formidable starships, able to assimilate planets and vessels with ease, but also prove the intimidation factor of the Borg, as if they weren't already intimidating enough. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central, and you can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. Alright, before Listen Adam assimilates you with even more information, I've been into this video to tell you about our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, you can play this immensely popular mobile game while being assimilated. Fancy that. Serious challenges are waiting near the end for you, something you really dig your teeth into if you want to master it. For Raid Shadow Legends, that is the Doom Tower, and wow, it's impressive. As the name suggests, the Doom Tower is essentially a giant prison. The Arbiter fought a pack of evil bad guys a long time ago, but she wasn't strong enough to vanquish them for good, so instead she locked them up in a massive super tower unit until she could learn how to deal with them. A thousand years later and the Doom Tower still remains, so that tells us how that went, but it gets worse. Now that Sylph is leaking back into the world, the Arbiter does not have a power to keep the wards up, so the Doom Tower is failing, and it's up to us to get in there and kick some bad guys down before they can escape and get out. To do this, you'll need to assemble an army of champions to aid you. Now, the regular Doom Tower floors tend to be pretty easy to deal with if you've got a strong team to beat them. You'll generally want to remove debuffs, and you're also going to want to have pretty high resistance. Lots of Doom Tower bosses ignore block debuffs, and they can do real nasty stuff to your champions. I could go on for ages telling you all about those bosses and how to fight them in the Doom Tower, but the real fun is trying these things out and experimenting for yourself. There is a ton of new things happening in Raid Shadow Legends this month. Special events as well as epic new champions, along with a huge new feature, the Guardian Ring, that gives you a load of new ways to use your champions. And at the start of December, Raid's releasing one of its biggest, most anticipated features ever. Take a look at this. Now it does look insane, with all these new updates and even bigger ones right around the corner, now's the perfect time to get started in Raid. If you wait in any longer, you're gonna get left behind. You do not want to get left behind, so if you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the video description, or scan our QR code and you'll get an epic hero chrono, who is an epic in the Doom Tower by the way. 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill and 1 ancient shard. You can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. So what are you waiting for? The lands of Raid Shadow Legends are waiting for you right now. The official Borg Collective designation for what we refer to as the Tactical Cube, or Oh God, We're All Going to Die, was a Class IV tactical vessel. The main noticeable difference between a standard cube and the tactical version was the heavily increased hull armor that extensively covered large portions of the exterior hull. The Borg Tactical Cube had an internal volume of 28 cubic kilometers, with each side of its cube being more than three kilometers in length and width, with a crew if you can even call them a crew, of 64,000 Borg drones. Now, before we go any further into the specifications of this ship, I want to make sure you're all aware the Borg are basically the fountain of youth for Treknobabel. A lot of this is going to be gibberish, so just keep up with me. Anyway, the interior of the vessel was also different from typical Borg architecture. This was likely due to several systems being reinforced, such as the vessel's central plexus, which was protected by a multi-regenerative security field. Overall, the Tactical Cube's interior design was just similar to the traditional Borg Cube that we're familiar with. That being that it featured a generalized design with no specific command center, living quarters, or engineering sections. Kind of like my old apartment, really. But anyway, 
In order to increase firepower, the vessel was armed with hundreds of weapon emplacements, cutting beams, torpedo weapon systems, all designed to cause maximum damage ahead of assimilation. And speaking of assimilation, it was, like all vessels, fitted with a holding beam, which restricts starship movement, as well as allowing for the transfer of drones aboard. Well, it sounds like a scorpion now, and well, no wonder they leaned on that metaphor so heavily. According to some sources and other versions of the Borg Tactical Cube shown in video games and media, the Tactical Cube was fitted with photon torpedoes the size of starships, along with starship-sized autonomous weapon platforms. Given a Borg Cube could deploy a hidden sphere vessel, that makes sense that the vessels could deploy some sort of weapon platform as well. In Star Trek Armada 2, which is not considered canon, the Borg Collective had developed some sort of technology which allowed for eight tactical cubes to join together to form a single large vehicle called a Tactical Fusion Cube. I wonder when they assimilated the Power Rangers, or Voltron. Ultimately, the Borg Tactical Cube was designed as a response to the increasingly complex and powerful defenses developed by races that the Collective had targeted for assimilation but were having a hard time following through on, such as Species 8472, who were basically a quadrupedal personification of the word nope, and the United Federation of Planets, who were just cheeky. Not only was the Borg Tactical Cube powerful, but it was also fast, being transwarp capable, allowing the vessel to create transwarp conduits to, and again, say it with me, TRAVEL FASTER THAN CONVENTIONAL WARP DRIVE! Ugh. So how did the Tactical Cube come to be? Well, the USS Voyager encountered a Borg Tactical Cube in 2376, and honestly, I could pretty much stop there. The Borg featured so heavily in Voyager. But okay, fine, we'll keep going. We eventually engaged this starship in 2376. Captain Catherine Janeway, Lieutenant Commander Tuvok, and Lieutenant Torres beamed aboard to deploy a nanovirus into the cube's central plexus. This nanovirus, in turn, would be instantly disseminated throughout the Borg Collective. Ironically, while the Borg Cube's central plexus was designed as one of the Borg's greatest strengths, it was also an area of vulnerability, as mentioned above. This connected with the plan to help members of Unimatrix Zero. The nanovirus was designed to separate members of Unimatrix Zero from the Borg Collective's hive mind. Once the virus took hold, it would allow members of Unimatrix Zero to retain their individuality in the real world and essentially kickstart a Borg resistance movement from within. As there was no way an away team could realistically reach the central plexus of a Borg tactical cube without being assimilated or worse, killed, a plan was devised. The away team, which consisted of Janeway, Tuvok, and Torres, allowed themselves to be partially assimilated into the Borg collective, but thanks to the Doctor ex machina -ing a neural suppressant beforehand, they retained their individuality and proceeded with their mission. To stop this, the Borg Queen eventually activated the self-destruct sequence for this vessel, known as Tactical Cube 138, forcing Voyager to beam the away team out before the cube's destruction and loss of the plan. The Queen's decision inadvertently saved the USS Voyager, which was taking heavy damage from engaging the Tactical Cube at this point. Canon-wise, this is the only known time that Starfleet has engaged a Tactical Cube, Though, given the designation of 138, we can easily presume that there were many more of this starship type out and about in the Delta Quadrant and beyond. Extended canon shows that this Borg starship class was much more widely used. During the Borg invasion of the Alpha Quadrant in 2381, many tactical vessels were used to subjugate planets, as well as lay waste to the forces of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants. The Borg Tactical Cube is also featured in Star Trek Online, where ship captains can engage it in gameplay on multiple occasions. Repetitive situations as well, if somebody on your team was still trying to grind for the Borg Shield set. Much like we've mentioned in this video, the Tactical Cube is a souped-up version of the traditional Borg Cube, and therefore just harder to defeat. The Borg Tactical Cube was designed by Doug Drexler, and was featured in a variety of Star Trek works. The video game Star Trek Legacy made use of a tactical cube as its final level boss, as well as being used in Star Trek Armada 2. Star Trek Online makes use of the Borg tactical cubes and classes them as a dreadnought. Star Trek Voyager Season 6's two-part episode Unimatrix Zero, which was our only canonical appearance of the cube, required an alternative design of a Borg cube, as such the tactical cube was designed, and also designated as Class 4 Tactical Cube. 
Drexler was briefed on the idea of this bigger Borg cube and set about designing it, wanting to stay as close to the traditional and well-known design as possible, although probably without so many visible office supplies like paperclips. He felt like the original design for the cube was so iconic and represented the Borg so well that he did not want to add anything too radical or that would give it too much personality. Instead, he opted to just add more armor. It always worked for the orcs, after all, so the tactical cube would appear more threatening. Designing the tactical cube led to Drexler describing his own drawing as a Borg cube wearing a flak jacket, which fits quite well. It was then model designer Koji Kuramura who would turn the tactical cube designs into the model we now know it as. Drexler added that most of the design detailing was added by Kuramura in the modeling stage, and he gave his opinion where and when asked. One of the actual designs that Drexler considered using was a Borg pyramid, which has since appeared in Star Trek fan games such as Star Trek Armada 3. This design was submitted as a joke, and Drexler never considered it to be accepted. Eventually, the design that was assimilated, uh, accepted, and approved by the producers retained the functional simplicity that was the hallmark of previous Borg ships. Drexler himself said that he liked the idea that the design said nothing about the Borg, while at the same time saying everything. And you know what? As a firm believer in the old adage, show, don't tell, I tend to agree. But what about you guys? Did the tactical cube satisfy your need to maintain the design status quo? Or, like me, were you desperately hoping to see a Borg icosahedron rolling around out there that was only capable of hitting a transwarp if it rolled a nat 20? Be sure to let us know what you think down in the comments section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, then we want to hear about it. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then make sure to hit the subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central, follow us on social media, join the Discord server... Join the Collective? No. For now, I've been Lieutenant Adam, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Resistance is futile, my friends.